My dear students, today I would be taking up a topic from endocrinology and what I would be discussing today would be adrenal insufficiency. So my topic today would be Addison's disease. So as far as Addison's disease is concerned, you must be knowing that there is this important gland known as the suprarenal or the adrenal gland and adrenal gland has got a cortex in the medulla and Addison's disease is basically a problem with adrenal cortex. So what is this Addison's disease? First of all you have to remember that there can be the insufficiency of the adrenal gland over here and the insufficiency can be because of autoimmune factors. One of the most important causes of adrenal insufficiency is the autoimmune diseases which may be associated with polyglandular syndromes, polyglandular syndrome 1 and polyglandular syndrome 2. In addition to that, you have to remember that we have got this very rare condition called as adrenal leukodystrophy syndrome and it is basically a childhood disease in which we can have adrenal insufficiency as well. In addition to that, we have got tuberculosis especially in underdeveloped countries, tuberculosis causing adrenal insufficiency. In addition to that, we already are aware of CAH, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which can cause adrenal insufficiency. You have to also remember that smith levitz oppitz syndrome is one of the rare causes of adrenal insufficiency. Now, how does the adrenal insufficiency present? You have to remember that there are certain cardinal features because this disease is associated with deficiency of glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids which are essentially secreted from the adrenal cortex. Now as far as the symptomatology is concerned, patients present with simple weakness and in addition to weakness they can be having hypotension. In addition to that they can be present with pigmentation, hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation happens to be a cardinal feature of Addison's disease and you have to remember that this has been asked many a times and this pigmentation would be more in case of palmar creases as well as the oral mucosa, the buccal mucosa, the oral cavity, the lips in addition to the pigmentation of the areola of the nipple. So you can be having widespread hyperpigmentation. Now nausea vomiting the area they are also important features of Addison's disease. But one cardinal feature you have to remember, hypoglycemia is somewhat linked to Addison's disease. Now, I would be coming to that in a short period of time. You have to remember that basically there is this defect in the secretion of mineralocorticoids and the glucocorticoids. And once there is this decreased secretion of mineralocorticoids, the manifestation will be in the form of hypotension. So you have hypotension and then associated with that you have got hyponatremia but hyperkalemia and as a result of because glucose metabolism is well controlled by glucocorticoids because the glucocorticoids are secreted, secreted in lesser quantities you have an impact on glucose metabolism and there is this characteristic hypoglycemia so you have to remember the features hyperpigmentation classic number one hyponatremia classic hyperkalemia classic and hypoglycemia so these would be the features how a patient would present and what would the lab value suggest you of decreased mineral corticoid levels decreased glucocorticoid levels decrease in serum cortisol and that's very important decreased blood pressure on examination would be there then decrease chloride levels in action to decrease chloride levels decrease bicarbonate levels so most of the things would be decreased but only two things would be increased increased potassium levels and increased serum calcium levels so lab features happen to be the backbone of diagnosis of Addison's disease and how do we diagnose Addison's disease Addison's disease is diagnosed by ACT stimulation test or course not test. So you have to remember the diagnosis is based on 
ACTH stimulation test. Now, this can present as an emergency as well, acute adrenal insufficiency. And you have to remember that the most important modality of treatment would be hydrocortisone. Hydrocortisone has got both a glucocorticoid as well as a mineral corticoid effect. So hydrocortisone happens to be the backbone of treatment of adrenal insufficiency. And in addition to that, you have to correct other electrolyte imbalances. IV cell line can be given in case of uh, hyponatremia. And in addition to that, you can give fluid cortisone which is a potent mineral corticoid and its effect on mineral corticoid uh, metabolism or improving the mineral corticoid instability is important. So hydrocortisone and in some cases fluid cortisone would be very important modality of treatment but the backbone happens to be IV hydrocortisone to be given immediately in case of acute adrenal crisis. So I guess this Edson's disease you remember these points and hopefully in neat PG examinations, in endocrinology examinations, you would be essentially asked about Edison's disease. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot.